um, Mark Atkins. Um, I'm from Australia. I'm a didgeridoo player, uh, both drummer, guitar, singer, songwriter, and storyteller. My um, background is um, from my mother's uh, people, Yamaji, one guy, witty, and from my father's Irish. I've been here before, but it's forever changing like any city, I suppose. But I love Singapore, I love the food, I love the people. These buildings are getting bigger all the time and they're changing, but yeah, I'm enjoying my time here. Yeah, at a very early age. Um, I mean, my, my first instrument was um, uh, piano, and then I went to guitar, and then in my teens I went to drumming, drums. Uh, I was playing in rock and roll bands in the 70s and that, up through the 80s. And then I ended up um, going home, because I had to. Met my uncle, who was a traditional um, uh, song man and did you do player, Wurrumbong. And that was the, sort of the beginning of um, um, my career as a, as a um, musician and as, as a player and, and, and touring. So that's basically where that started. Well, how they play and how they're made is circular or cycle breathing. They're made of wood and naturally they're hollowed out by uh, termites. This one I got from a place called Coranda up in northern Queensland. I ended up buying it in a, in a, in a did you do shop in Amsterdam and I was on tour in Europe so I did the tour and that and then took it back home and refined it when I say that shaping it and um, taking a little bit more out of the the, the, um, the end of it termites will make the um, make the hole up will hollow it out and they eat up through the center of it and special tools for honing the end out and that sort of thing but yes yeah, so I did a bit of work on it got it to where I want it and it's been with me 30 odd years now. When I wasn't working, I was teaching, um, teaching did you do? Because a lot of a lot of the young players that coming through wanted to learn. I've got about um, just over a thousand students when I teach kids and, and adults, uh, but more so the kids than that. That sort of started to happen a lot more because I wasn't touring because of the, you know, the big C or COVID. So, um, yeah, I ended up doing a lot more teaching and ended up working as, as a youth manager and just doing that teaching, you know, the play. Yeah, I mean, some more than others, I suppose, through South America and, you know, Columbia and... Uh, Paris, Vienna, all over the place. And orchestrators, orchestras, uh, just a band on the corner, um, all over the place, with different genres and that as well. So I'd have to say yes. Yeah. They like it. Um, I, I mean, some of them have never seen it or heard it. And funny enough, it does make it more acceptable when they see and hear it played with a traditional instrument that comes from their part of the country and it makes it that much more acceptable, so to speak. What do I enjoy about sharing my music outside of Australia? Well, I, I suppose it's a look you get sometimes. It's, what's that, you know? You get up and start playing it. And then what's happened is you're meeting other musicians too. You get to hear and listen to their traditional instruments and we end up playing, you know, like, for me, like um, what I'd seen uh, when, when you was doing like world music, if you like, you know, did you do being the, um, the oldest instrument there? Yet yeah, it was the last one to come in and join the, the the rest of the instruments. So, and that was that was a journey too, just composing and working with them, and and and, and people just thinking, well, wow, you know, like um, uh, I love the sound of that, and and, and that's what got me um, started in the first place was the sound. Last night, what a night. I had a dream I dreamed I had me a time machine 
I dreamed I had me a time machine Last night, what a night, I had a dream I dreamed I had me a 